How much of me is on camera? It's such a hot topic, I don't even know. It can be anything. About that, we probably shouldn't. Thank you. Greetings, dear friends. In this episode, we speak about a unique component of World of Warships, about a secret ingredient, if you will. This rare resource is called User Experience. Today, we're going to tell you how this resource is gathered and how your subjective impressions and individual responses affect the development of our favorite game. What is UX? UX stands for User Experience. Since we are the UX Research Department, our task is to research user experience, the gaming experience of our players, utilizing various methods. A UX researcher helps developers understand what this experience is exactly and what we can do to improve and change it. On the whole, UX is aimed at making players comfortable playing a game and willing to return to it. What types of research do you conduct? We carry out two types of research. First is surveys. It's highly likely that many of our players have received and taken part in surveys. The second type is the lab. We have a gaming lab. We invite players there. They play the game in the lab and we ask them various questions. There are two rooms in the lab. One of them is for a player whom we've invited. Sometimes me or Someone else from our research team may join the player, and we can ask them, for example, to perform some actions in the game. There's also a second room for us when we stay during the test. The room is equipped with a PC we can use for recording. For instance, the point where the player is looking. If this is a website page, we can later create a heat map and check where a player was looking the most. If we're dealing with a group test, we can organize it in the gaming room so that several players can play there simultaneously. We may need such a test when we want, for example, to look at a team versus team interaction, how players interact within a team in the game. We've made various experiments regarding formats of how our tests are conducted. Most often, especially before the pandemic, we invited players to our office when the pandemic broke out, we tried out remote formats. What hardware do you use in the lab? The lab is equipped with hardware for recording videos and streaming. When our colleagues ask us to conduct some tests and order some research from us, they can come in and see how the tests are going in real time, how the players interact with the test. They can sit down, watch the process, and take notes. We also have an eye tracker. It helps us know where a test participant is looking or not looking in real time. In this way, we can see whether they read a hint or not and whether they spotted it in the first place or not. Sometimes it may happen that we can see a player reading a hint, but after we question them whether there was a hint or not, they would answer there were none. So they were looking at the hint, we saw that, but they didn't remember it. That's quite an interesting thing. In addition to high-end lab tests, UX specialists utilize the good old survey method to acquire necessary data what types of player surveys do you use? Among our regular surveys, we have an entry survey. This is a survey for new players. We ask them to tell us about themselves, what their hobbies are, what other games they play, what they prefer, etc. We also have surveys for people who have been playing for a long time. So, since our surveys are sent out on a regular basis, we can see some dynamics there. I mean, we can see how the needs of our players are changing and what players think about changes happening in the game. We also regularly conduct surveys after public tests and game updates. Quite often, regular surveys allow us not just to learn what players think about our game, but also learn about our audience on the whole, what their hobbies are, what they watch, and what they like. We also conduct one-time surveys. 
Such surveys can be requested by developers or, for example, marketing managers. These can also be researched for our specialists from the art department who apply visual changes to the game. Basically, it can be anything, starting with the question, what do you take for breakfast? And ending with, what things do you dislike about the game balance? What is the most important thing to keep in mind when creating surveys? It's important for a survey to be clear. It's the main thing. After reading a question, a person must understand what we want to know from them. It's mandatory that a question isn't ambiguous. The question should be composed in such a manner that one can't understand it ambivalently. If a question isn't formulated clearly enough, and it can be understood ambivalently, then it will be unclear to us what result we're going to get and what we're going to analyze. That's why the wording should be clear. Sometimes it's easy and fast to compose such questions, but other times, our team needs to think how to shape words more clearly, how to make a question which isn't big and easy to read question, a question which isn't long, a question which doesn't require loads of clarifications. This is the work that requires some specific intellectual efforts, so that in the end, we have an easy and clear question that allows us to get the information we want. Sometimes when translating questions into other languages, the same question can mean one thing for us and a totally different thing for people speaking another language. For example, in Russian, average means something not so good. So if we say average, it means that we mostly didn't like that. We encountered an interesting issue. We followed up the average answer option with an open-ended question. What did you dislike about this feature or game aspect? So Russian-speaking people answered with what they disliked, while, for example, English-speaking people answered, I liked it, I picked the average option, but it doesn't mean I didn't like that. Such issues can happen. So in this regard, we see differences in the way how questions are shaped and try to account for that. How is the confidentiality of questions enforced? At the send-out stage, all links to surveys are personalized. Every specific person, specific player, to whom we want to send a survey, receives their personal link. That's why we ask players not to share their surveys with other players who, for example, didn't get their surveys because it doesn't make any sense. We don't take such answers into account because we can't understand what player group this person is related to. Respectively, at the send-out and processing stages, we can basically merge answers from our respondents, our players, and some aspect of their game statistics. For example, some personal ID or email address. The things that players shared with us. But after that, when we're working on research results that will then be passed to those who ordered the research, the data becomes depersonalized. A link between an answer and player's ID is removed and ceases to exist. How do you process the answers? Closed-ended questions are processed in a quantity manner, and open-ended questions are processed in a quality manner. For example, I'm the person who reads the things that our dear players write. Some special software is also used for that. We conduct frequency analysis. In other words, we detect what words and expressions appear in answers most frequently. After we've detected these words and expressions, we search for them, and I look at what exactly players have written about them. Some time ago, I made a script that performs frequency processing of open-ended questions. The script works with an entire array of open-ended questions and shows us the frequency at which some words are mentioned. There is also the same list of how frequently words are mentioned together. So the script also works with words that are mentioned in pairs. For example, if the question, what did you like about the changes introduced in the latest update of World of Warships, is asked, the frequency analysis will show some main words, and I can proceed reading answers with these main words. After that, the answers are merged, and the most frequently mentioned of them are formed as a brief resume for reporting. 
Thus, we obtain a brief extract of the things that respondents mentioned most frequently for every open-ended question. Don't you worry that a survey sent to a player will end up in their spam folder? We try not to send surveys to a single person more often than once in two weeks. If we do it too often, players will simply get tired of them. They might put less effort into taking the surveys and even skip them. Before everything else, when the research starts, a customer who requested the research, or we, if we're conducting the research independently, defines the criteria, what players we want to survey. We don't send out surveys to everybody who satisfies these criteria, because there can be very many such players, even hundreds of thousands of them. From the analysis perspective, there is no point in sending out surveys to all players. We just need a representative sample. If you didn't receive some specific survey, don't worry. You'll surely receive some other survey on another topic. All players are important for us. The reason you didn't receive a specific survey is merely a coincidence and the random probability of you getting into this or that survey list. Thanks to the regular manner of surveys and wide variety of questions, the connection between World of Warships creators and players is getting stronger. Surveys often act as a feedback channel for players to connect to the developers, where players can speak out on a topic which can be totally far off a survey topic. Tell us about cases when the results of your research directly affected the game. We can give examples when decisions were made based on the results of our research. In the very beginning, there was no hint for the binocular view. So, during the first couple of battles players fought, they often didn't even know that they could go to the binocular view by pressing shift. We can also mention that a hint for purchasing a Tier 2 ship arrived in the game in a similar way after lab tests. This hint helped new players get the concept of researching ships faster. We sometimes saw during the tests that players, for example, fought five, six, seven battles playing a tier one ship. And it wasn't very interesting for them. If we speak about some global decisions, there are cases when decisions relative to advertising and some collaborations were made based on the results of our research. If we talk about even more global decisions, there was a case in the early days of World of Warships, at the stage of alpha and beta testing, when our game designers and managers couldn't decide whether to make the game a hardcore one, make it more complicated, or make it an arcade game. At that point in time, opinions were collected from very different sources. The forum was thoroughly analyzed. We paid great attention to talks with our active players who communicated with the developers. After we had collected the results of mass online surveys, we understood that very many players considered it highly important that they could rest and relax while playing the game. Judging by the survey results, there were quite a lot of players who felt this way. Thus, respectively, these results also served as input for the decision between making the game harder or more comfortable for players. How do you distribute the surveys? We have four primary delivery methods. First is the survey that is delivered through the game client. Players receive a notification in their port to take a survey. Players click the Take Survey button, and it redirects them to a browser where they can take a survey. A second method is also in the game. These are surveys about whether players are satisfied with battles in the game. I believe that many of our players have seen those. When a battle ends, players can see the question right in the game client, how satisfied were you with the latest battle? In this case, they don't need to transition somewhere else, they just choose an answer and that's it. 
The third delivery method is the WGC. For example, we have a survey about uninstalling the game. So when players uninstall the game, they receive a survey that asks them why they are doing so. Thus, we can track why people uninstall the game, what they dislike about it, and what issues they encountered. And the fourth delivery method is email. We rarely use that method because surveys sent out via email usually don't get much response. The percentage of surveys taken using this method is very low. We conduct five research processes per month on average, if we mean surveys, quantity research. This figure can sometimes vary. During some busy periods, there can be 10 surveys a month, but that happens pretty rarely. Is the survey for a new update always identical to the previous ones, or is there any variation? As a rule, if we talk about updates, we take a look at the branch notes and determine the most significant changes that are going to be added to the game with an update. We shape our questions based on that. Primary changes must be considered in a survey. Sometimes the guys approach us and want to add questions that aren't directly related to a specific update. Sometimes we add questions related to the game in a general manner to the update surveys. The most recent one was about decorations in the port. Our guys who work on the port decorations for holidays or the release of new branches had the question, what do players think about these decorations? Do they like them or not? Do they consider them adequate or inadequate? Maybe they're too big. So the guys asked us to add such questions. Sure, they will make their own decisions based on the obtained results, whether they need to make more decorations and make them brighter or vice versa, make decorations muted and make fewer of them. There is another example. The guys who work on combat missions for our website came up with the question, how frequently do articles on the website help players find combat missions that are interesting for them? How frequently are players getting involved in completing combat missions when they find them specifically on the website? We can also add these kinds of questions to surveys. These examples were taken from our latest tasks. It sometimes happens that we make surveys well in advance. For example, if we receive a request to learn some things that don't have a specific deadline, these can be some changes that are planned to be introduced at some point in the future. Let's ask players what they think about that. In such cases, we start preparing a survey well in advance. For example, we prepare our yearly survey for our active players in advance. Such such surveys have questions that are repeated year after year. Questions about age of our players, their hobbies, favorite movies and music, etc. There are other questions that appear repeatedly in the surveys. Every year, we ask our developers and product managers, what do they want to ask our active audience about this year? Then we add their questions. Basically, this is also done well in advance. Do players ever surprise you with their answers? When players answer our questions, I have the feeling, and I believe it's absolutely normal that people think this way, that players consider they communicate directly with the developers, with the ones who made a specific feature. Players think that they are telling their ideas to the developer's face. Actually, this isn't accurate. All surveys are processed by us. All open-ended answers are processed by us. After the data has been processed, we pass all of it to the developers in the form of pure facts, without any emotions. Answers in our surveys can be funny, and they can also be pretty rough. I mean, that sometimes we read curse words, and sometimes we read answers that aren't directly related to their respective questions. There are also cases when no matter what a question was about, players think that it's more important to answer about something else. For example, to questions about textures or level of detail, players can answer, this doesn't matter, just fix the balance. Have you experienced any funny situations during lab tests? Probably the funniest story that happened over several years of our work was when we invited a participant for testing. The participant coming for testing was very nervous. We couldn't understand what the reason for that was. He was nervous and didn't tell us why he felt that way. 
Eventually, when he realized that the testing didn't involve anything dangerous or unpleasant, he came out of his shell and told us that the day before he was invited for the testing, as it turned out, he had taken one of our surveys. And he was pretty unreserved in the survey. He scolded us and wrote unpleasant things. In the evening of the same day, I called him and said, Hello, this is Wargaming. We would like to invite you to our office. He thought that we had invited him to talk about why he was so rough in his survey answers. But after we had conducted the testing, he was pleased. He was extremely satisfied with his visit to our office and said that he would never write such vulgar words again because he had met the people who read these surveys and realized that they were real people. He realized that there was no reason to be so rude. We want to thank our players who take our surveys, those who are not indifferent, those who sincerely and altruistically answer our questions and want to help us make the game better. What you do is really very important. We truly read everything. We analyze everything, and we don't neglect a single thing. Thank you very much. It might sometimes seem to you that nobody has read the things that you have written multiple times. Actually, it isn't true, because all answers are collected and passed to the developers. They see your feedback and make respective decisions. It might not happen so fast. It might not happen immediately. It might happen that your opinion was about an issue that that wasn't the current priority at the time. But nevertheless, we're still extremely grateful that you express yourselves, that you do so in detail, correctly, and, in most cases, politely, and that you spare your time to improve the game. Thank you. Our game exists and thrives mostly thanks to our collective experience. On one hand, this is the experience of developers who enjoy and know how to make games. On the other hand, this is the unique experience of players who plot the correct course for World of Warships from the other side of the screen. That's why your opinion is truly important for us. Thank you for staying with us. 